Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. I'm going to talk tonight about the kingdom of God. And I was thinking about certain aspects of the kingdom of God. And one of the aspects of kingdom of God is is the Word of God. And the Word of God says that the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violence take it by force. And there are times when faith necessarily has to be violent. And let me explain what I'm saying. There's times when you're going to have to grab a hold and take whatever it is that you're needing from God. And if we look at the life of Jesus, there was times that he got violent. And not anybody could say that Jesus wasn't a man of faith. So saying that, the kingdom, uh, seek the kingdom of God first and his righteousness And all these things would be given to you, added to you. The kingdom of God is within us. We know that. But we're going to talk about certain things as being the elements of the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. His righteousness has many facets to it. Many, many, many facets. For instance, the word of God is part of the kingdom of God. To seek the heart of God would be righteousness. To seek his ways would be righteous. All the things of God are righteous. Whatever you seek from God, it'll be a righteous thing. Now we know we can't seek somebody else's wife or somebody else's husband. That wouldn't be righteousness. We're talking righteousness out of the Word of God and built on the Word of God, made on the Word of God. There were certain things that Jesus said. He said, uh, in, in one time uh, that I remember, he said, come and drink. The righteousness of God a lot of times is spoken of as water. You know, there's rivers of water flowing. That's God's way of doing that thing. 
God's righteousness. And, and Jesus said to, I, there was a great multitude of people when he said it, uh, he said, you're going to have to drink my blood. You're to drink my blood and eat my flesh. And the, there were lots of people who left. And who, can, who can hear these words? But there was a, it was a righteous thing for Jesus to say they didn't understand it. They did not understand the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So they were offended. They didn't stay with him long enough to find out what that meant. You know, we could ask this, have you ever in your life really wanted something that you didn't know how to get it? As far as you were concerned, it's totally out of your reach. Or what about a dream? You've had a dream, a, 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 a dream that just had to be a dream because you saw no way whatsoever of that dream coming to pass. And you called it a dream because it wasn't possible in your eyes. But the righteousness of God will bring those things into tuition. And he tells us how in his word. He says there's nothing impossible for those who believe in Christ Jesus. And all this time God has been Teach us, teaching us the right ways of God. We know we have to ask God because God told us, you have not because you ask not. So there's a parallel with your desires and asking God and believing out of the righteousness of God that it's going to happen to you. You say, well, you're using that word a lot. I want to drive that home if I don't drive anything else. And we're going to see that that same righteousness, if we walk with God according to the word of God, which is our righteousness, then all these things are available to us. It doesn't look like it's going to happen. You know, what if there was a time when you you were asked by God to, to go pray for somebody and when you got there, that person had Ceased. Well, what do you do? He said, go pray for the person. Well, God already knew that. You're going to have to take what God told you and take it by faith, violently. You know, um, Smith Wigglesworth, one time he had to pull a man off the slab and stand him up against the wall. And I don't know how many times a man fell, but before he left there, he walked out with Smith. He took the kingdom of God with violence. 
violent faith. Now, I'm not saying we're always going to have that, that kind of circumstance where we have to use it, but I'm saying this. We need to know about it. We need to know that it, it may be needed sometime. When Satan is trying to eat your lunch, it would be a good time to get violent. And by the way, it's a righteous thing for us to ask God for things. Praise God. Let's go to James uh, chapter 1. James chapter 1. And verse 2, and we're going to go down through 8. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations. And divers' temptations is trials and uh, tests. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you like wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and abradeth not, and it shall be given him. Here's a bud in there. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wafeth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. I want to reiterate what I said a while ago. Faith is a righteous thing. Um, let's go to Hebrews. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. James. Hebrews 11, 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seeking God. is a righteous thing to do. What I'm trying to drive home is the kingdom of God, seek first the kingdom of God and his, and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You know, a lot of, a lot of people want to get, have God to give them things that they desire in a lustful way. And God's not going to do that. It's just not His way of doing things. But seek the kingdom first and His righteousness and these things will be added to you. They left out that part. You cannot leave part of what God's saying and expect God's words to work for you. You have to do it like God says. Seek first the kingdom of God. 
And this has been on my heart now, I don't know, for a couple of months, seeking the kingdom of God. And I've talked to God about it. And I'm, I'm going to give you some of my, my experiences. It seemed to me like the more I sought God, the more I prayed. And it seemed like the more I prayed, I had more things to pray about. And there's been times in my life when I, I just have to pray in the Spirit because I just didn't have anything to pray about. And the more I sought God with prayer, I found out those things that I thought mattered to me Paul put it this way. But they become dung to him. All those things that, that were behind. You'll find out when you seek the kingdom of God, compassion seems to be more deeply rooted into your spirit, man, than ever before. And that compassion will compel you to pray more for those people that need it. Then there's a love of God. It just seems like the love of God, when you, when you start seeking God, I'm talking about really, truly seeking God and the kingdom of God, it just seems like the people you just had a little bit of despise for, you just don't despise them anymore. You know, the love of God will constrain you. And all those things that were so important back there, they're tr truly behind now. You just, you just don't care for those things. You don't want those things. Another thing that we talk about... Uh, in the righteousness of God is God's judgments. God has only righteous judgments. You know, at one time, Israel turned their back on God. Well, I don't know whether it's just one time, several times evidently. But one time, they, they just turned their back on God. And several of the prophets talked about it. They'd left their, their first love. They were going after idols and killing their children or, you know, sacrificing their own children to, to these uh, gods, Rim, Pham, and Moloch. And this kept going on and on and on. And, and they didn't want to hear the prophets. And somewhere along the line, God had to draw a line in the sand. Because this thing had gotten totally out of hand. And his prophets kept talking to him, trying to tell him that there was a judgment of God. This judgment is a righteous thing of God. He had to stop it. He had to put a stop to it. 
And we as uh, people of the New Covenant Church, we can look back on those judgments of God and they'll help us to understand certain things that we're just absolutely not supposed to do. And I know we've got the word of the New Testament. But we know that God's word will keep us safe. You know, if you'll read Deuteronomy 28th chapter, you'll find out one side is blessing, one side is cursing. God knows what will bring a curse into the life of a person. God had it written down. And He told them about the curse, and He said, choose life. Don't choose cursing. The cursing uh, is not good. He just flat out told them, choose life. You don't want to choose death. The curse is death. We were talking about the drink a while ago. Um, drink my blood and eat my flesh. Uh, there was a man that was out in the desert. And he had everything he needed to be out in the desert. He had plenty of water. He was coming through the desert, doing fine. And, and he found a, a shady place. He said, well, I'm going to rest a little bit and sit down here and, and just take a sip of water. So he sat down and he took a sip. And, and he was just looking at the desert. And it, it has its odd beauty to it. It's just, there's beauty in the desert. And... While he was so consumed in what he was looking at, he reached to get his water, and unknown to him, he had turned his water over, and all of his water drained out. Now he's in the desert with no water. So he knows where there's a water hole. But it's a long way from him. And on his way there, he starts saying, if I drink that water, I will live. If I drink that water, I'll live. And he got to the point where he was staggering. He's getting weak now. But he was still saying, if I drink this water, I'll live. I got to get to this water. I got to drink this water and I'll live. So, this went on for some time. He was getting weaker all the time. Now he's on his knees, hands and knees. And the water hole's not too far beyond him now. And he's still saying, If I drink this water, I'll live. If I can just get that water and drink that water, I'll live. And it took him quite a while to get to the water hole. And there was a, a cup there that was left by somebody, you know. And, and he dipped it in the water and he looked up at it and he said, If I just drink this water, I'll live. And he kind of pondered this thing and kept saying, if I just drink this water, I'll live. Fell over dead. Why did he fall over and die? Why did he die? Didn't drink the water. In the the Word of God, he talks about the washing of the water of the Word. I, I told that 
to say this. That is part of the righteousness of God. To be able to drink and drink freely. The water of the word. It's a righteous thing to partake of the, the water of life. And Jesus is our righteousness. We can stand before the Father God with absolutely no sense of sin upon us or guilt or any kind of a plague. Through the righteousness of God. Now we know the Word of God is a righteous thing. And the kingdom of God is a righteous thing. A place inside of us as people where God rules. The kingdom of God inside of us is a place where God rules. And our righteousness is doing what God wants us to do. His will in the earth is His righteousness. Hallelujah. And we just thank God and praise Him that we have His Word. And his righteousness within us. And we thank him. Oh, we thank him in Jesus' name. And to that we say amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or Using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.